It's the Dark Reading News Desk. I'm Terry Sweeney, contributing editor to Dark Reading, and I'm joined today by Rob Gurzif, CEO and co-founder of Psychognito. Rob, really appreciate you joining us here today. It's a pleasure to be here, Terry. Um, vulnerability and IT risk management products are well established. Uh, they perform well, at least for the, the time and the period that they were designed in. Um, but as we know, the nature of networking has changed and advanced, um, especially with the advent of cloud. Yeah. Let's start by talking about how the, the current approaches really aren't serving businesses so well. Yes. So over the, the last decade, we've seen the IT ecosystem growing exponentially. Uh, organizations are using hundreds of SaaS solutions. They have hundreds of partners that have access to their network or their systems. And some of them have dozens or hundreds of subsidiaries. The problem is that attackers look for the path of least resistance. They, sure. They only need these three or five things they can easily exploit that would provide them a good enough of access to critical networks or uh, data directly. And it's really uh, difficult to map these 50 Git servers or hundreds of databases you have in the company, including all of these hundreds of GCP and AWS environments, and understand what attackers are really seeing in that sense. Sure. Um, so because hackers just need that one open window to, to do their damage, yeah. um, what do you advise customers in those instances? Yes. Our approach is do exactly what attackers do. Don't tell us anything. Don't deploy anything. We'll tell you what attackers can learn about your IT ecosystem, which subsidiaries or partners can lead into your assets and data. Um, and we lead with that. We show that to customers on the uh, first or second meeting on our platform. Rob, you're a big believer in this aspect of um, reconnaissance um, with regard to vulnerability testing and, and risk management. Uh, reconnaissance is something normally associated with, with spies and, right. and espionage. Right. Um, talk about why it yeah. is particularly appropriate in a cybersecurity context. So our background is in intelligence agencies too. Okay. And attacker's approach is find the path of least resistance. The problem is that 20 years ago, when these vulnerability scanners and pen testing services and all of these solutions were designed, companies only had an intranet. They actually knew what they have and they had a couple of servers maybe connected to the internet. So back then, if you scanned these couple of IP addresses, you were totally fine. Today, when you have millions, in some cases, of exposed assets, most of which are not yours, you have to apply the reconnaissance approach where you start with the company name alone and you go to the server, you find these IP ranges, you find these keywords that resemble the company's uh, products and services and subsidiaries. You find logos related to that company's uh, and, and, and their affiliates. And then you look at the web or the internet for related assets based on these. And one AWS environment here may expose this uh, uh, username or this uh, specific fingerprint that will lead you to another GCP environment that is totally uh, uh, unmonitored by the security team. And there you'll find these other fingerprints or logos or SSL certificates and so forth. And that's how the IT ecosystem expands from 1,000 assets that, that uh, you and I can find using a laptop very quickly within a few minutes here to millions of owned assets and potentially relevant assets. Right, wow. Well, I mean, if the nature of networking is to to expand and, right. and connect, uh, I mean, uh, while I think we both love the job security, it <laughs> creates tons of ongoing vulnerabilities, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you don't essentially love that aspect, but the IT ecosystem is going to grow exponentially anyway, no matter what you do, which is why we don't have the phrase, you have to reduce your attack surface. That's essentially impossible. What you need to do, which is related to the business problem you really have, is eliminate your critical attack vectors. But you can only understand what the critical attack vectors are if you look at all of the assets, not just 70% of them, and you actively challenge all of them. 
So Psycognito is also championing this, this idea of, of shadow risk elim elimination. Um, tell us a bit more about that and how it works um, and how it's different from existing risk management approaches. The shadow risk elimination is all about understanding that other 50 or 30 percent of assets that are in this unknown unknowns area and you, by definition you can't solve unknown unknowns problems if you have too many uh, uh, inputs and you don't drive conclusions in the process. Uh, current other technologies are receiving IP ranges and domain names or looking for their immediate related assets to understand what this company really owns. What we're doing is twofold in that regard. A, we have a very uh, comprehensive discovery process that leverages an at at attack surface mathematical graph that allows you to say, this asset is not owned by you, it's this uh, Cisco ISA of this partner, yet it, it provides access to your internal network, it has your company name and company logo over there. Attackers can learn, they can get access to your network through that asset. And we find that massively critical, and so do security teams. Okay. Picking up from there, um, older technology also inundates SOC and InfoSec professionals with alarm, log alerts, just all sorts of data that is uh, completely impossible to address manually or, or, or act upon. Um, more automation is obviously where the industry is heading, but um, it, it's a crude instrument. Yes. And I, I'm wondering, um, how do you advise customers in this realm? Mm -hmm. the, the missing puzzle piece in that sense, we believe, which in, and that's relevant to many industries, is business context. If you simply look at IP addresses and open ports, and then you can attach, uh, uh, for the conversation, CVEs or malware or whatever to it, you will get bombarded by tens of thousands of issues or alerts or events. When you actually know where the mainframe is, where the payment mechanisms are, what are your databases, and can attackers see them, you can look at five or ten events a day and not necessarily thousands that are prioritized exactly the same way. If you look at vulnerability scanners websites, they are proud to show you 30,000 critical issues. Yes. That would not make sense in any other industry, right. I believe. And the business context uh, we're leveraging in that sense, that the botnet collects, but then the backend uh, processes so that we can show these CIO or CISO visually what they actually have makes tons of sense. And you know, if you ask this CISO to go to this whiteboard and draw, uh, how do they see their organization and their risk landscape in that respect? They'll start with drawing their own company, these few partners and subsidiaries, and then these business units or uh, business technical environments like AWS. They will never start or even talk about IP ranges and IP addresses and domain names. But these tools that have been built over the last 25 years can only discuss these. And in their data model, they don't have other things. OK. With all that in mind then, I mean, that's great context. But how is Psycognito addressing these issues? There are three stages to that process. A, the botnet gathers massive raw data from the three and a half billion servers and devices connected to the internet. And I'm talking about dozens of fingerprints that include these keywords, logos, unique JavaScript libraries that are unique to this company. And then the uh, discovery engine builds this mathematical graph uh, with uh, assets that are even only related to the company and not necessarily owned by the company and their business context and relations. So here is a Cisco ISA, not a random IP, but a Cisco ISA owned by this partner. We know that it's your partner because of X, and it's connected to this internal network. That is something that attackers even can learn sometimes. So that's the first part. Then we run an attack simulation on these assets. And the third stage is prioritization, okay. where we leverage the business context we just talked about to understand what are the five or ten attack vectors that attackers can understand that expose critical data or provide critical access to critical networks 
and that can be quite easily exploited because even the most sophisticated offensive organizations don't want or prefer not to spend a year now in reverse engineering this specific gateway rather than using this misconfiguration or leveraging that misconfiguration or simply using this ex exposed data. In some organizations, uh, in this multi-billion dollars financial ins uh, institution just recently, we have found these uh, 50 applications exposed. One of them had this uh, uh, backend server that exposed a specific directory, that exposed a bash history file, exposing dozens of fingerprints, I'm sorry, dozens of credentials. Oh, wow. okay. These credentials were owned by or related to that company and many others that they partner with. And we're seeing many of these things. Now, once you see this attack vector, it's obvious that that's the path of least resistance to your company. Interestingly, I think they were not even aware of that backend server, the security team. And obviously, that attack vector is not a vulnerability. There is no CVE for that. So even if you run a vulnerability scanning on that particular server, you will see nothing. And pen testing will only look at these couple of other applications and essentially 1% of the attack surface. And other solutions that work in large scale don't run attack simulations. Um, this is great stuff, Rob, giving us a lot to think about with regard to vulnerability testing and risk management. Thanks so much for joining us at Newsdesk today. Thank you. It was a pleasure. We've been talking with Rob Gerziev of SciCognito. This has been Terry Sweeney for Dark Reading Newsdesk. Thanks for joining us.